Hey guys, what's up? My name is T-Space, and welcome back to another story time with me. So today I'm going to be talking about my three-step plan in improving my public speaking skills. So like most of you, I had extreme problems with public speaking when I was in middle school, high school, and kind of the beginning of college. And overall, I didn't want that to happen anymore after middle school, because middle school was probably the worst part of my public spe speaking years. I would always stumble upon my words like I do now. <laughs> or, you know, I would just stop in the middle of my presentation and just sit there. I would literally, like, during, during one of my middle school uh, presentations, I was, I don't know why, but I had to do a presentation in a math class. Like, what? That makes no sense, right? I don't know. I was confused. So I had to do a presentation in math class about quarters. I don't even know why, but I had to. It was, like, required. We were in algebra, and we were learning about quarters. Okay, so, you know, that was my presentation. And I, would, I, would, I went up there, and I started talking about the history of, of quarters, which I completely forgot because I wanted to, you know, bury that memory deep, deep down inside myself because that was so embarrassing. I don't want to remember it anymore. But for the purpose of this video, I will try to remember as much as I possibly can. Anyhow, so I would, you know, I would, I, I sat there, or I stood up in front of the class, I started reading what I wanted to talk about, and then I just stopped talking. It was the worst experience in my life, because, you know why? Because five minutes went by, which felt like three seconds to me, and my teacher asked me, Eric, are, are you okay? Hello? And I, I just... I was like, I'm done. I dropped my flashcards, sat back down, and I told the next person to go. That's exactly what happened. Oh, man, it was embarrassing. So from that point on, I went home, and I'm like, that's never going to happen again. In high school, people are going to make fun of me, and it's just going to be the worst experience of my life. So I need to prepare myself for public speaking when it comes down to high school and even college. So I sat down in my room and I advised a three-step plan that overall worked in my favor. So the first step is blurring your vision. The second step is um, knowing how to bullshit. And the third step is knowing how to, I guess, deal with nervous hands. So the first step, blurring vision. The reason why I wanted to make this a step is because most of my teachers made it a requirement uh, for the presentations to have eye contact with your fellow students. It kind of just showed that you were interactive with your presentation and you weren't just, you know, staring behind your piece of paper or, you know, staring at the piece of paper on, on your desk or whatever as you just read what you wrote down because that's a little easy in, in, in some cases. But anyhow, so they, they wanted you to have eye contact with your students. So I didn't want to do that. You know why? Because there are five main faces that I want to try to avoid as much as fucking possible. For one, the teacher's face. The teacher face always has this kind of this like cold stone look with kind of a condescending aspect to it where they're 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 staring at you with a blank face but they know they know once you mess up they're going to just look down at the piece of paper and start writing and that's the worst that's the worst thing that you can see they're like fuck you don't want them to write anything down you want them to write when you're done not when you're doing the presentation okay so you know you want to avoid that face that's the first face i do not want to look at because it's going to throw me off my groove the second face is that that straight A student, that student that knows everything and is so interested in class and they just want to know everything. No offense if you're one of those people, but you are annoying sometimes when it comes down to presenting because if I look at that face and I mess up in you know a specific aspect that they know a lot about, like I don't know, maybe maybe I'm talking about space or something like that, and I I, I say that you can see a black hole, and you know Psh, you can't see a black hole, they're they're invisible or blah 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 blah, you know stuff like that. If if I see that face and you know I, I mess up, they're gonna they're gonna look at me in more of a condescending tone or saying, "Man, you're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about," and that's gonna mess me up. The third face that I want to avoid is kind of like the second face, but on the confusing side. They they stare at me and they're very interested in in my topic, but they're confused. They they just have this dumbfounded face. They're they're kind of lost in my conversation. And overall, when you look at this person, you might ask yourself or you know kind of. Uh, second guess yourself thinking is my presentation you know co coherent can you know people understand me is it is it is it easier to understand I don't know man I mean this guy looks so confused like I feel like I'm, I'm doing something wrong so when I feel or when I when I when I feel like I I, I, I guess get in that mood I, I you know I lose my place and therefore I just stop talking and I just sit down and repeat what happened in middle school now the fourth and the fifth uh, faces are kind of they kind of go together they're basically the, the the students that don't really care 
and they just want to do their own thing. Number four, the fourth face is the is the face where they're not actually looking at you, but their body at their their body um, uh, attitude kind of gets to you. They're either texting on their phone, talking to someone else in class. Basically, they're just trying to be distracting. And more or less, that kind of that kind of feels uh, demoralizing when you look at it. When you look at a person not paying attention to you, when you you know you prepared your speech and you want everyone to you know listen to it, it kind of sucks. It, it makes you feel bad. It makes you feel like like your shit like you don't you're not important <laughs> and I don't know when I look at this person I feel bad so you know that also messes me up during my presentation and the fifth and final face isn't again once it's not really a face it's it's just his body body language it's the it's the sleeping student the student that you put to sleep when you put a student to sleep and you're a student yourself that's like a time paradox that should never ever happen you know it's it's usually the teachers putting the students to sleep not the students stu putting the students to sleep that just doesn't work nah that's wrong that's like big x is all over there so those are the five faces i want to more or less avoid from looking at so i devised this plan of blurring my vision now the way i blurred my vision is kind of the same way you cross your eyes i'm pretty sure most of you guys have tried it by you know just crossing your eyes and you look all stupid when you're a kid but more or less i use that technique to blur the faces and the images that i was looking at when i wanted to make eye contact with the audience that i was speaking to now the way i did it was I would focus on something far off in the distance, whether it be a picture or even the wall itself at the back of the room, and I would begin to cross my eyes. Once my once my my target was you know going into double vision, or basically I saw two of that image, I would stop my eyes from crossing. That was the point where my eyes looked completely normal, but at the same time I became close or uh, nearsighted. I think is the the right term. So basically, everything that was far away from me was completely blurred, and I couldn't I couldn't tell anyone's emotions, faces, you know, body body uh, attitude or whatever I just said in the beginning. But now, you know, I couldn't see anything pretty much. So when I would look up, I blur my vision in a, in a slight way that I wouldn't be able to see anything, and that literally helped me stay confident and stay focused on what I wanted to talk about. Now the second step, the second step is knowing how to bullshit. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm actually going to leave that to the to the last part. So I'm going to move on to the third step. The third step was, uh, I guess, occupying or fixing my idle hands. When I, you know, present. I'm always nervous, no matter how confident I am with my topic, I'm always nervous. So I always have to have something in my hands because if I don't, my hands just start doing what they want to do. I'm not going to lie, I think during one of my presentations in high school, my hands were grabbing my balls. I don't know why they were grabbing my balls, maybe because they're itchy or something, but it was so embarrassing. People were wondering why I was grabbing my balls and it was just, okay, enough said. So you know, I wanted to you know, fix, fix my, my, my idle hands. And I wanted to, you know, give them something to do. So what I did was I would actually make flashcards. I would write down everything that I wanted to talk about, and then, you know, I'd be done. But I didn't actually use the flashcards the way they were meant to be used. You know, people use flashcards to, I guess, find where they left off or, you know, want, you know think about what they uh, forgot to say in their presentation. They basically, like, kind of bullet points in a way. But more or less, I use flashcards to kind of memorize what I want to say before I actually say it. So I write everything down and then on each flashcard I kind of generalize what I want to talk about on that flashcard and I memorize that generalization in my head. So the point or to the point where I don't have to look down at my flashcards. If I look down at my flashcards, I feel like it kind of ruins the flow of my of my presentation and if I do that the that long break of me trying to find what I've what I've done or what I've uh, presented and what I haven't presented becomes kind of a whole mess. So more or less the flashcards aren't there for me to remind myself what I need to talk about. They're there to to keep my idle hands occupied. Just like, you know, news anchors where they, you know, they grab their papers and then they 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 uh they stack them on the desk or they, you know, they they uh collect them on the desk or whatever. They, you know, they they do that thing. You know what I'm talking about. And you know, they they put them on the desk and then it's all fine and they pick them up again for some odd reason and they do it again. And you're wondering to yourself, why do these news anchors do this so much? And the reason why is because they're nervous, or at least their hands are nervous. They need to do something with their idle hands so they don't do something really awkward with them like I did. And anyhow, okay, so you, you know. But that, so I would use the flashcards to, I guess, occupy my idle hands so they wouldn't do anything, you know, mischievous or lewd, I guess you could say. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's what I did. That was my step three. 
I would make flashcards and I would just hold them during my presentation. I wouldn't even have to look down at my flashcards. Actually, to 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 add into my uh, my presentation or to my presentation, I would look down to act like I'm reading from my flashcards and then you know quickly look back up to the to the class and blur my vision. But you know that's that's part of my plan. That's part of my strategy. Now, the second step that I want to leave for last, which is of course now, is learning how to bullshit properly. I've seen a lot of people, uh, a topic that they don't really know how to talk about, and they, I mean, you could tell they're ill-prepared, and overall they just, they're just kind of doing it because they have to do it, and they don't really care what the grade uh, the teacher gives them, so they, they just go up there and they kind of bullshit, and when they bullshit, when they bullshit, they they start talking about huge tangents that don't even intersect with their topic. Like not even once, they could be talking about a president and then going on to your favorite ice cream because he talked about ice cream once in the in the presentation. That you know that's that's huge. That's like it's weird. It doesn't make sense. You shouldn't do that. That's the wrong way to bullshit. Now the right way to bullshit. The right way to bullshit is knowing how or knowing, I would say a lot about your topic. I think, um, yeah, this past quarter, I, I was I was doing a presentation about the President Eisenhower, and uh, I wanted to talk about, or more or less, I wanted to focus on Eisenhower during World War II, and you know what he did during that time period, and you know uh, how he became, you know, the Supreme Commander, and blah blah blah, and you know that was that was what I wanted to focus my paper on, and more or less what my my uh, presentation was supposed to be focused on. Now. With this presentation, I had to at least talk for about 15 to 20 minutes. And I know, I, I knew before I even started that there was no way in hell I could talk about that topic for 20 minutes. So I needed to learn how to bullshit. And of course, I learned this in the past, so I was already prepared. I literally started talking about uh, Eisenhower's adolescence or, you know, his, his childhood and then how he went to, to West Point and what he did in West Point and blah, blah. And then I led up towards my main topic of my essay. So in a way I bullshitted on tangent or no, that's not the right way of saying it. Well, I just bullshitted on topic. I'll say, so it's, it's kind of a tangent, but the tangent is on topic. See, I'm talking about Eisenhower, but not exactly what I want to talk about. So, more or less, when you bullshit properly, it's a lot easier for you to bullshit because you don't have to make stuff up on the spot. You just know it already. So, that that bullshit during the presentation, I'm not going to lie, it ate up about like 12 minutes of my presentation. And then the rest of it, I just talked about what I want to talk about. And then the presentation was over. And I was like, Poof, done. Out of here. <laughs> so, those are, those are my three steps that I used throughout more or less the end of middle school, the big, uh, you know, the full entirety of high school, and then the beginning of, of college. And overall, I felt like it was a pretty good step. The, the steps were pretty good, and it helped me out. And overall, it made a lot of things that were very nerve-wracking nerve for me a lot easier. And yeah, so that was pretty much my story and how I overcame my fear, or kind of. I'm still a little nervous when it comes down to, you know, presenting in front of a big audience and stuff like that. But more or less, I'm, I'm a little better. And this is the three steps that I use. So hopefully, if you if you are having, you know, problems presenting in class or whatever, or, you know, you're singing the national anthem because you fucking want to, you know, do this stuff. And overall, hopefully it'll help you. I mean, it helped me. Maybe it'll help you. I don't know. <laughs> But anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed today's story. Um, hopefully, I will bring out another one next month because I don't want to. I don't want to clump these stories up too much, mainly because these stories, if I if I clump them up too much, people kind of lose interest. So anyhow, I hope you guys did enjoy today's story. And once again, my name is T Space, and I will catch you guys later.